Hi, my name is Hannah Eris, and I'm a teacher here at Masterworks Dance Studio. Today, we are going to do what is called PBT, or Progressing Ballet Technique. This was a system developed by Marie Walton Mahan. She is out in Australia. Uh, she was a professional dancer, has been a professional teacher for many, many years, and developed this type of conditioning to strengthen core muscle groups and provide stability for dancers, as well as injury prevention. And really, it's great to strengthen your core, whether or not you dance full time or not anymore. For myself personally, I have found that because my joints tend to be more hypermobile, you doing these exercises really activates all of the muscle groups that support all of my joints so that way I am least likely to injure myself when I'm just walking down the street or if I am teaching or taking a dance class. I know that not everyone will have this equipment at home so I've developed a couple of different ideas that I have found from other PBT trained and certified teachers um, to just use whatever tools you might have at your house so that way you can participate in this class. I did receive my PBT certification uh, last July uh, 2019. So here we go. Okay, but, so if you have these materials, uh, this exercise ball is great. The thing you want to do is be able to sit on the ball and create a nice, comfortable 90 degree angle. You don't want to be sinking too low so that way your knees are too high or sitting so high that your knees are not at a 90 degree angle. However, if you do not have an exercise ball, you can use a chair, you can use the edge of a mattress or a couch, you can even use like a small rolling luggage. What I have found for myself today is I have found this small stool and then I have found a nice pillow to put on top. The pillow helps it not be quite as stable and it also puts a little cushion down so I'm not going directly on top of the stool. A couple of very important things to think about. If you are hyperextended, like I am, my knee goes backwards, my leg is fully straight. stretched. Any time you are using your ball, so this is my ball, I want to make sure that the back of my knee is on the ball and fully supported. If you have a stretched leg shape like this, or even slightly back knees and slightly bent, even a little bit of a bow leg, your leg does not have to be completely on top of the ball. Let me show you what I mean by that. So if you have a stretched leg, um, even my bow leg, knock knee, anything except for hyperextension, at any point during any of these exercises, your knees don't have to be on top of your ball or whatever you're using. If you do have hyperextension, like I do, you want to make sure that this is why I use this chair. Your knees are supported underneath the ball. Okay, let's get started. The first thing we are going to do is work on bridging. Now, what this bridge does is it activates all of our back muscles and our core muscles, all of our abdominal muscles. The main important things that I want you to think about is making sure that you feel that your spine is lengthened. I want your neck to be long, shoulders are pressing away from your ears, the scapula and your back are flat, your arms are flat, and you're thinking of having a very, very long, long spine. So if you take our tool, you're going to scoot your butt as close to it as possible, whether that's the walls, whether that's the bed, whether that's the end of your couch, whatever it is. And I'm just going to bring my legs so they're parallel. My shoulders are pressing down from my ears, my back is long, and I'm going to take four counts to bridge up. So I'm going to articulate through my spine. One, two, three, four. In this alignment, my hips are level, one is not twisted, 
or lifted, but focus on level. My core is engaged and strong to support my lower back, and my legs are fully stretched. My shoulders are pressing down away from my ears, and my arms are soft on the ground, not open. And then I'm going to lower down, articulating to the spine. Five, six, seven, eight. We are going to do that with some music to practice that bridging process. Four times, we will use four counts to go up. So we go up one, two, three, four, bridge down, five, six, seven, eight. We will do that four times. After that, we will bridge up in two counts. One, two, hold three, hold four. Lower five, six, hold seven, hold eight. And we will do that four times as well. So four counts to go up, four counts to go down, that sequence four times. Then two counts up, two counts to hold, two counts down, two counts to hold, and we will do that sequence four times. You might have to readjust every now and then. That's okay. Once again, if you have those big exercise balls, use that. If not, absolutely fine. You can still get the same amount of benefits with that. If your floor needs an exercise mat or a towel or your carpet, please use that. And if you have um, some issues in your lower spine, you can also roll up a nice sweater or something to support it so every time you roll down, there's an extra version. So I'm going to press play on our music here, and we are going to get started. So setting ourselves up nice and close to the tool that we are using, making sure that everything is ready to go. Spine is already long and lifted. Shoulders are pressing down from your ears. Arms are nice and long on the ground. And core is already active and engaged. Let me press play. Here we go. Deep breaths. Six, seven, four counts. position and now we're going to hold it 
for a bit longer at a time. Let me readjust the pillow here. Here we go. So we are going to go up on our bridge on counts one and two. I'm still in a parallel position. So my toes are facing forward. I'm not rotated outward. So I go up one on the introduction. Seven, eight. I'm going to use my arms now. So I'm going to sway my arms to the side. One, two. Other side. Three, four. Slowly. Five, six, seven, eight. To the side. One, two. Other side. Three, four. Slow. Five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to open my arms. Place them down, lower down, then I'll bridge back up. So we have a little bit of a break after that bridge to lower down, find a little bit of a reprieve before we go back. So what's happening is I'm a bridge, so I go on the bridge in the introduction seven, eight, and I bring my arms to the side, and to the side, and then slowly. I repeat to the side, to the side, and slowly over. Then I'm going to open both my arms for second position. I'm going to lower them down to the ground. Then I'm going to articulate through my spine, down. Then I articulate through the spine, back up in second position. Same rule of thumb as before. Elongate the spine. Abdominals are engaged. Shoulders are down. Make sure you are. It doesn't have to be a large movement, just a soft, floating through the waves kind of movement. Let's keep that going. So on the introduction, we will make our bridge. And throughout, you want to make sure that your hips are level, that your pelvis is level, and that you are not twisting your hips or dipping. So your glutes are also engaged. If you're in a parallel position, meaning that my knees are facing directly to the ceiling and both my legs are fully stretched. Once again, if you are hyperextended, it's very important that your knees are supported by your tool and that your knees are not off of it, creating stress to the back of your knees. Here we go. A little core and core bra. So setting yourself up. Readjusting as you need, lengthening that spine, shoulders are down, your core is already activated, and let me press play here. It is going to be the same music that we used before.
knees back in. Stretch out your lower back a little bit. Great work. All right. The next thing that we are going to do is a turn out exercise. So this is we're going to work on our rotations from our deep rotators. What often happens when people talk about turnout is they stand up and they crank their legs as far back as possible. However, what we're going to try and access are those deeper rotators. And because we're using our tool here, our prop, we can't cheat uh, by standing and forcing our turnout, which is great. So it strengthens all those deep rotators that are needed to support our turnout and our rotation from the top of our hip socket. The exercise we're going to do also requires a nice bridge. All right, so we set ourselves up yet again, and we start in that parallel position. We are going to hold the introduction. You are down, seven, eight. We're gonna bridge up on one, two. One, two, now I'm going to flex my feet, three, four, point, five, six, flex, seven, eight, point, one, two, now I'm going to lower down, three, four, and I'm going to rotate my legs so we're turned up. Then we repeat, up, one, two, so now I'm rotating side. I'm rotated fully as much as possible, holding with my deep rotators, knees are going sideways. Flex three, four, point five, six, flex seven, eight, point one, two, lower down, down, and then I'm gonna turn it back in and apparently fix, fix my pull. And then we'll repeat that same thing in parallel. Turn it back out, repeat it, rotation, in our full rotation. So once again, if I'm on my device here, my legs are fully stretched, I'm going to articulate through my foot, one, two, point three, four. Really articulating my entire foot, seven, eight, one, two, three, four, on bridge, rotate. Everything in a rotation, so you're going to end up in a first position is where you will be. Once again, we have a nice, long, lengthened spine. Shoulders are down, long neck. And make sure you are breathing. Hips stay stable, they do not twist forward, backward, hike up one way or the other. Sometimes if it's helpful to figure out your hip placement, if you go up with your bridge, you can physically put your hands there figure out, okay, are my hips low? The answer should be yes. Alright. This one shall be interesting. They're all great exercises. If you find an exercise that seems to be really beneficial for what your body is needing, by all means, do it daily. It's great. Find the tools that you can use at home and do things for it. All right, let me pull up the music for our turnout exercise. Here we go.
Okay, everybody. Hopefully, you could also feel that in your feet, as well as those deep rotators that are responsible for keeping and maintaining our trapped. The next exercise that we're going to do is a posture exercise. So this requires us to actually be seated on the wall. So a nice little break from our bridge. So we are going to <laughs> sit on whatever it is, whether it is some stacked up couch cushions, the edge of your mattress, the edge of your couch, a piano bench with some pillows on it, whatever tool you're using. Or if you have an exercise ball, that's great as well. We are going to start seated on your tool, whatever you are using. I'm just going to your in here. Hopefully you can see me. Hi, yes, you can. So we're going to start seated. I do have a pillow underneath me to create a little bit of instability. The goal is we want a little bit of weave of, of wobbles. We don't just want a solid surface to sit on because all of those little wobbles get to our intrinsic muscles, the teeny tiny muscles that we need, whoo, activated and engaged. So I'm not going to be seated on the floor. I'm not going to be seated on a regular chair, a mattress, couch cushions, exercise ball, whatever you have that is a little unstable, activates all of those deep, deep core muscles. So we're going to sit nice and tall and my feet are in a parallel position and my knees are facing. Once again, I have a very long, elongated spine. My core is engaged, my neck is long, and I am moving. So we are going to lift our leg to the front. Flex. Articulate through that foot as we point and lower back down. Other side. Lift. Flex. Point and lower. Now, anytime you lift that leg, you want to watch that there is not any shifting in your upper body or on your supporting side. That leg lifts and nothing else in your body moves or changes. Everything is very stable. Everything is very still. You can either have your hands on your thighs, or if you would like, you can keep your arms in a nice dance ballet second position. Okay, let me get the music ready for that. We will do that with our right foot, our left foot, our right foot, our left foot. We will continue to repeat. So starting with a very, very tall po posture. Once again, you want that core engaged. And it is also very important if you have something that can help you see your side view, that you're not tucking under, so we're not creating a, a curve in our lower spine, nor are we sticking our bum out, putting pressure on our back. But we want our whole spine to be very supportive. We want to go straight up, so we're not tucking our pelvis under, nor are we doing a tilt and sticking out our bum and pressure on our back. Take a moment and find that for yourself. Readjust your pillows if you need. And I am going to press play with our music here. Here we go. Seated nice and tall, true parallel position, abdominal engaged. Six, seven,
Only that gradually we will add on more things and different positions with a different use of for the bra. Today we're just going over the basics. And as we continue with this course, if you decide to take it, we will be adding on different exercises, which is great. All right, so that was a nice jolt posture check. This entire program that Miss Marie developed is really about getting all those small, small, small muscles engaged. You might feel a bit of burn, you might not. Uh, the goal is not necessarily to be like, oh, oh wow, I feel the burn as much as it is to be like, wow, I feel my spine lengthened. I can tell I have a really nice posture right now. I can feel some muscle groups acting. Right? The next thing we are going to do is also standing, and this is for our supporting leg. It is called attitude dibble. So we, you are going to use your ball here, whatever tool you have. I'm going to try to move mine slightly sideways so you can see my leg a little bit more. You're going to create an attitude position with your leg on whatever your tool is. Now, so my leg is bent to the front. However, what is very important to see is that my foot is lifted. So I'm not actively pressing down and relaxing. And my foot is also not like single and flexed. My foot is fully pointed and I'm trying to get to thinking of like my big toe touching up on my big toe. So I'm using this as a support, but not to fully take hold of my feet. So we have this attitude to goal line, and watch that both hips are level. I'm not twisting forward, twisting backwards, and lifting one hip or another. My supporting leg is going to be in your best rotation, in your best turnout. And so uh, our knees are going to track over our chest. So from here, my supporting leg here, I'm going to do a series of bending things. So pull down and down. As I go down, I'm rocking my inner furs around. My knees are going over my toes because they're not coming forward, and my ankle is going down and going straight up. Nothing is changing my upper body. All that's happening is my knees bending up. And we repeat down. And down, up, and up. Third time, down, and down, up, and up. And I'm going to extend that leg and bring it back in. We're going to repeat this, down, up, and up. Three, fondu. I'm really thinking about my supporting leg here, rotating as much as I can. Extend, come back in. We will do that sequence three times. And then we will do a little swap over. We have eight counts to swap over to the other side. Setting yourself up for success. Shoulders, hips, square. Knee goes over your supporting leg toes. And this foot is lifted back. Your arms can be on your hips. If you would like to check just where your placement is at. Your arms can also be in second position. If you would like, you can bring them to fourth, on row, whatever position is most beneficial for you and what you're doing. If you are using an exercise ball or something that has a little less stability and you would like to use a bar, whether that is your kitchen counter or a chair, you can do that as well. Let me grab the music, please. Here we go. This is our attitude table. So fond and that's a thing. All right. Setting yourself up.
time for a couple more exercises. The next exercise we are going to do works on our arabesque line or our back, our full back. If you have lower back issues, please refrain from this exercise. Uh, and we'll use this to support ourselves. Here we go. So the setup here is very important in terms of your posture and what your body is doing. So I'm going to put my hips on top of my tool here. It's very important that you don't go too far up on your belly that puts a lot of pressure on your organs or too far down on your thighs because then it is hard to move your legs. So you really want it to support your hips. Right here. So we're going to go up. Oh, ta -da! So we're going to take a moment. Almost like a little plank. And I am going to have my elbows nice and soft. So my elbows are currently facing you, the camera, and there's a slight bend. I'm not fully extending my elbows. My elbows are nice and soft. And my scapula are flat in my back. I'm not pushing them out, really leaving them almost like curving my back. So my back is nice and still. From here, I'm going to lift my legs. Oh I'm in a nice fifth position. I'm going to lift my back leg to four counts. One, two, three, four, forward, down. Two, three, four, repeat, up. Two, three, four, and down. Two, three, four, third time, up. Two, three, four, and down. Two, three, four, then I'm going to come down a little bit, switch so that when my other leg is now behind. And I will repeat that all with my other leg. And then we will. So once again, you really want your hip bones on top of your tool. Um, if you do not have something that you can slide all the way across like I just did, you can also very easily do this on the ground. Ta -da! And I'm going to go into like a, I'm going to keep my arms down, spine as long as I just go with that leg for four counts and bring these down. So I'm going to do the exact same exercise, but um, most importantly, I'm making sure that both hips are flat on the floor and I'm not opening my hips up. So if you do not have a tool that allows you to kind of be elevated off the floor, you can do this exercise on the floor. It has the exact same amount of benefits, which is great. So we'll set ourselves up and I will press play to the music and away we go. Great. Doing Great. Make sure you also sit and wash your hands. Alright. Elbows are soft, scapula are flat in your back. Here we go.
exercises, you might find that one leg feels strong than the other, one leg feels more flexible than the other. If you find that you sometimes injure yourself in everyday life, like I do, um, Marie Walton Mohan, the one who, the woman who created these progressing ballet technique exercises, suggests that to do these exercises, once on each leg, but if you have a weaker side, do that weaker side twice. So do double the amount on your weaker side, so that way it gains strength. Here we go. We have time for one last exercise, and that will be the end of our trial class today. The last exercise that we're going to do is an alignment in a la seconde, with our leg to the side. This one is also standing again. So you're going to move, Either your tool or yourself, so that way you are sideways to whether you're using your couch, your mattress, an exercise ball. And you're going to place your leg on your side. It is imperative that you are in your best turnout, but you're not forcing it. It's very easy when we have a device and we're not using gravity to try to push as far back as possible. But if your turnout isn't here and your hips don't naturally go that far, that can create a lot of pain. Unnecessarily so. So find your best Alice on position and your best rotation. Our supported leg is also rotated outward. My toes are pointing sideways and my knee at every point in time is below my toes. This exercise is very similar to our a la a devant exercise, except now we're in a flat one. My hips are still level, my legs are both stretched, and once again, I'm not releasing my entire foot onto my tool, but it is lifted. I'm going to prepare my arms to second position, and I'm going to do the same thing we did with our leg in that attitude de bon plan. We're going to be and stretch, and two, and stretch. I'm gonna do this a third time, three, and stretch, and then I'm gonna re-prepare my arms, get my arms a little bit. Repeat down, and stretch. My knees are going over my toes, nothing is changing in my upper body. Third time, and stretch, then I'm gonna switch and prepare the other leg. All right, here we go. Strong core, long spine, using your turnout from your deep, deep rotators and never forcing it past your best and natural turnout. Let me get the music started. And here we go. Ready? Setting yourself up.
time we have for today's trial class. I hope that you learned something new. I hope that you enjoyed today. We also hope that your body just feels good. It is great to be able to express gratitude to the Lord by also taking care of the tool and the body he has given us. Um, so I hope that you all are doing well. If you enjoyed this class, please register for four classes every Thursday night in July. We will be alternating between this progressing ballet technique um, from the founder Marie Walton Mahan and also Pop Pilates with Miss Naomi Lee. So thank you for trying this trial class. I hope that you all are doing well. And we will see you again through Zoom.